I want to offer a few suggestions as you prepare this month for your first Paideia Center reading group. We're considering Maximus the Confessor and excerpts from his Ambigua, reflections on early Christian fathers and how they help aid our reading of Holy Scripture and our thinking about the significance and centrality of Jesus Christ. This month, we're reading pages 45 to 96 in our edition on the cosmic mystery of Jesus Christ. You'll be considering three lengthy ambigua. As you do so, I want to encourage you to think about Ambigua 7 as a manifesto for understanding all of Maximus's theology. It really is foundational to everything that will follow. In, in point of fact, as we pay attention to this Ambiguum, which really reflects on a, a question that's found in an early quotation from a Greek father, Maximus will wrestle with what it means to be a creature who's meant to grow spiritually in what we might call the path or the way of holiness. In in so doing, he's wrestling with those who would seem to suggest that somehow growing in holiness means being or becoming something other than a creature. He's wrestling with those who might be called originists, a group of later and somewhat radical followers of at least certain elements of the theology of origin of Alexandria. It may or may not be the case that they're faithfully following that earlier theologian, but they are quite popular in Maximus's own day, and he deems them to be remarkably troubling. He wants to respond to them and argue that we need to understand our creatureliness, that we are not the creator. And Ambiguum 7 helps us understand the way in which we understand our becoming, our being made, and then and only then our being moved by God eventually into a position of spiritual rest or Sabbath, of ultimate peace and calm in God. We aren't those who somehow had that rest and have now moved into a position of becoming, as those originists would say. This may sound somewhat esoteric or somewhat philosophical, but Maximus is really trying to help wrestle with the way in which holiness is for creatures. And that's going to have significance as you read on into Ambigua 8 and 42, where he's going to apply it to humans and to Jesus Christ, respectively. He's going to talk about what's involved in being human and growing and experiencing passion and suffering and change and all manner of human finite circumstance. And then he's going to reflect on Jesus, the way in which he actually assumes our finite humanity. He actually bears this human experience that he might transform it. Maximus is going to argue that by becoming creaturely and assuming this creaturely frame, Christ is able to give it true holiness, to transfigure and transform it that we might in and through him experience it as holy. Eventually, that we might experience it as restful, marked by Sabbath rest in God above. In our own day, we continue to wrestle with questions of spirituality and of holiness. What it involves, does it involve somehow uh, sort of limiting our humanity, our finitude, our embodiment, Maximus is going to help school us to pay attention to what the Bible highlights and prioritizes as we think about the holy or the sacred, about the spiritual or the Christ-like. He's going to remind us a truth that, that we could find if we paid attention to Augustine, to Calvin or Luther. The, the idea that being holy doesn't mean being any less creaturely. It simply means becoming Christ-like by being united to him and being transformed in and through him as his grace has made possible. Indeed, as his grace and resurrection have made actual and real. And so I encourage you as you read these three ambigua this first month to Invest your time in reading Ambiguum 7, looking at it as a foundational manifesto for all that will follow, paying attention especially to the way in which Maximus is concerned about those originists, this understanding that would not only get humanity wrong, but in so doing get Christ wrong. And then pay attention, be watchful for the way in which he wants to describe our experience of becoming, of motion, and of rest in a way that helps us understand ourselves as creatures of God and eventually as those united to Christ with much hope.
I look forward to hearing of how your discussions go as we seek to learn more from Maximus and with one another. Thanks for being along for the journey.